What's up, everybody? This is Henry Fleischer here from the Cannabis Dispatch, also the CBD Business Networking Group on Facebook. And I have a very special guest today. I have Andrew Bauman of the Indiana Cannabinoid Alliance. So, Andrew, what is the ICA all about? Hey, thanks for having me on. Um, so what we do is we are an educational group of I'm a lobbyist, but there's others that are CBD store owners, um, hemp growers, various aspects of the industry. And, and we just kind of are a, a front facing group that meets with legislators and other local industry people and and advocate for the, the CBD industry and Delta 8 industry. Um, actually, one of our members, Jacob Estep, you had on a month or two back for Estep's products. Yep. And actually, uh, they just won best new product at uh, an expo out in Vegas yesterday. Oh, so right. kind of good news for everybody. But um, yeah, so basically what we do is we just meet with with elected officials and kind of talk about cannabinoids, not specifically um, hemp or cannabis, uh, but just but where they are in all different types of uh, plants and how they can help. And um, just kind of being another voice of reason out there and a resource for them because it's such a, a new industry and, and there's a lot of misinformation and, and just a lack of information in general. Of course. Yeah. When did you get involved with the Indiana Cannabinoid Alliance? Uh, we started about a year ago, so we're still pretty new. Um, and it was just some folks were, were focused more on the seed side, which is great. And they're, and they're great people. And we work with them. And, and there's just some folks that had approached me because they knew I'd, I'd spent about 13 years working for the state senate. And so I had kind of been around the state house and, and knew some of these folks. And so they'd approached me. And so together we had, had started this group just to get out there and just be a resource, like I said, where if the members had a question, hey, give us a call. We're, we're happy to chat about it and, and provide information and sources. Um, and, and so that's kind of how we started. And, and we actually have an event tonight, a fundraiser, where they're doing a Delta 8 dinner where we have a chef come in and do infused foods. And we're going to kind of educate about that product as well. Oh, wow. So yeah, what was that like a hot moment where you're like, hey, I want to get involved on the education and legislation side of cannabis? I think it was probably a few years back where I was, I was still in the Senate. And I, it was when they first when the moms first started fighting for CBD here in the state for youngsters with intractable seizures. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I was sitting in a committee listening to them. And I'd always kind of watched the issue, but I hadn't really gotten actively involved. But but at that point, you know, just little kids or, you know, this is something that can really help them out. And why are we stopping at that point, these folks from being able to use these products? And so that's kind of where I first got interested. And then it's just such a fascinating thing with how terpenes interact and the entourage effect, right? And, mm -hmm. and how the cannabinoids do their thing. It's just been fascinating. It's just, you know, it's like deeper down the rabbit hole you go, you just get more drawn in and there's just more to learn. And then you you know, it's like being a vegan or a Burning Man participant, which I am, you know, or a CrossFitter. It's like you just start talking to people about it all the time. <laughs> They're like, oh, here comes Andy. We're going to talk about cannabinoids or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's, and, and the other thing I love about it is just everybody works together generally, and just a good group of folks. And they, uh, even your competitors, other store owners will reach out to each other and help each other out, which is really cool. Yeah. And um, what was the toughest thing you went through when you first got the, ICA up and running? Probably two things. One was just, although they're intertwined, was just getting our name out and letting people know, hey, we're a legitimate group. We're not some grifters, um, you know, and that our hearts are, you know, and that we're in the right spot. We're not here just to take people's money, but we really want to affect change. And then on the legislative level, there's still some blowback. And in Indiana, we've had some fights, as many of you know. Uh, currently, you can't sell craft hemp flour or CBD flour in the state. Um, and there's, there's been some issues with that. Yep. Uh, go ahead. Oh, so the, so the problem is then just working with legislators to say, Hey, you know, we're not just here for cannabis legislation, which is a big concern. Some of them have is that this is some gateway, you know, to that or a backdoor legalization. It's like, no, this is a separate product. Um, and we want to talk about this first. Now, once you know that there's a time to talk about that issue and I think it's coming real soon, but. It was just convincing that, hey, we're here to talk about this right now and we need to stay on, on target. Uh, so that's right. Is there anything you would do differently if you had to start the organization from day one again, knowing everything you know now? Oh, that is a fantastic question. I mean, so, and that's, uh, I feel targeted joking. I mean, because 
because well, I'm a nitpicker, so I'll replay the same thing like you know a hundred times in my head. Be like, how could I have done this better? But you can't you can't live in the past. What I would say is just maybe get started earlier. Um, you know what's that saying? Like the best time to plant a tree was ten years ago. The second best time is today. Yep. I'm sure I did a terrible job with that, and I apologize. But uh, but yeah, I'd say just get started earlier because it just, especially in Indiana where we're so far behind other states, it you know I just it you always have concerns that there will be a problem where like the big WalMarts or the big uh, groups will come in and kind of keep out the smaller, more boutique uh, farmers or boutique uh, stores. So I I would say just start earlier and then ahead of, also get ahead of some of that misinformation that's gone around that reefer madness kind of stigma. Ah, got it. Um, out of curiosity too, have you worked with other states with organizations similar to yours as well? Not yet. Uh, we've reached out a little bit and there's been, Michelle, our executive director has done a great job kind of making those things happen. I've been more focused on the legislative side, but we're always uh, willing and wanting to work with other people because again, we're all in this together. And that's again, one of my favorite parts about this industry is that everybody kind of works together when they can. So we're, we're working on that. I know that's not the best answer, but we're definitely trying to. Uh, got it. And uh, what do you look for if somebody's looking to join the ICA? They would uh, check out our social media. We're at uh, the usual spots, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, and it's dash I-N cannabinoid. And you'll see that on those three. And then we have a website, uh, incannabinoid.org. So come check us out there and, and we're happy to chat with you. And we're gonna have some more meetings as the pandemic kind of goes away where we can get some more people and in-person meetings. And, First, uh, like, yeah, if, so, if there's somebody already in the cannabis space and they're looking for organizations to join, is it like, do they have to have a business in the space? Is it, can they be anybody? Who do you look, who do you accept as the committee? Oh, uh, anybody, anybody that's interested. So right now we're made up of primarily uh, various CBD dispensaries and then a couple of farmers. But uh, and then our other Jacob as well, who actually produces Delta A oils and vape products. Um, but anybody that's either in the industry working legitimately, um, you know, by all the regulations, we don't want any dodgy, mm -hmm. you know, because that's a big problem, too, is the legitimacy issue. Um, but and then anybody that's an enthusiast that just wants to come and learn or help spread the word and help educate. Uh, everybody's welcome. We'd love to chat with you. Um, we'd love you as a member. But even if you just want to come talk, we'd love to come talk with you. Yeah. What's the number one way you currently find new members? I would say throughout we reach on social media and then like these dinners like we're doing tonight. The infusion. Oh, nice. thing. oh cool. And has the, so what role has the internet played in growing your organization? Uh, just things like this. It just really, uh, it's a force multiplier. Yep. You know, it just really helps extend your reach almost exponentially. And then just, um, and it's a great archive as well for that information for people to access. And then with everybody having cell phones on them now for better or worse, you know, and everybody generally having access to computers, um, it's just a great resource to have. And, you know, I don't know how old you are, but remember the old Encyclopedia Britannica when I was a youngster, you know, you have all that in your phone now. So even assuming you have access to some, some of the information and some of the studies, you have amazing access to information at your fingertips. Oh, very true. And in the next six to 12 months, where would you like to see the ICA? Uh, continue growing, continue to have an impact on the, the legislature and policy. You're going to be, see a big fight this year, probably on Delta 8. Almost certainly uh, you'll see some issues with vaping again, some regulations on that. Um, I'd like to see us continue fighting for craft hemp flower. In my mind, it's kind of ridiculous. Other states sell cannabis and we can't even sell CBD flower. Uh -huh. uh, it's, it's absurd I mean it's it's absurd so I, I'd like to see some action on that and I, there's been some forward movement but it's you know it's it, unfortunately sometimes bad bills pass the first time and great bills take a couple years so I so to answer your question um, probably just to see us keep moving forward on that keep cracking at it yeah. and uh, make some movement in the legislature oh out of curiosity too how do you feel about the federal legalization bill that was crafted by Schumer ah uh, uh you know, I'm torn on it personally. I'm glad that they're finally doing something. I'm not as excited uh, with the, the large tax. So like in the Midwest, if you're in Illinois, you're already paying upwards of 30% on certain products tax. And then you add a 25% federal tax on that. It's, you know, that's egregious. But 
Um, I think they kind of, a lot of times they do things like that so that they can um, whittle it down a bit and they cut the deals. So uh, not to make everything super long or with like an asterisk at the end, uh, sorry, lobbyist, but I would say um, it's, you know, it's a start. I, I like the safe banking act as well. I think, you know, it doesn't kind of cover the social equity issues, but it's, it's a start as well. And I think you could make an argument that by passing that, and it does have a fairly decent likelihood of passing that you could also let groups that are not the Walmarts or the Amazons, um, the smaller groups that, to access cash, because that's such a huge issue in the industry is yeah, accessing cash. You know, one because out of um, a lot of business owners I've spoken with are concerned that like the bill, like any bill passed, would favor all the big businesses and put them out. So like, yeah. I believe that should be a big part of the bill is have make it a fair game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look at look at Illinois. It, what a mess. Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, it's like one thing, too. It's like I feel like there's a different value when you when you're buying something from somebody who actually created a company just specifically for hemp, CBD or cannabis versus somebody who is already pre-established and they decided, oh, I'm going to go in there. It's a different feeling. Yeah, 100 yeah, percent. Yeah. And, and I'll, I won't call anybody out, but you're right. There's a definite, completely different feel. And, you know, it's very clinical you know, and procedural and transactional is what I'm looking for, you know, versus you have that extra kind of touch, that extra care. Yeah. yeah. Even out of, uh, even after like federal legalization, there's going to be other types of businesses that could be born out of that too, on the ancillary side, not always like people who touch the product directly. Cause you have, yeah. you've got like even tourism as well too. Yeah. There's all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah, you could have the the eco tourism, or you might have people being able, depending on regulations, camping out. You know, like we have a, a really cool big cat sanctuary on the west side of the state, and you, uh, one of their fundraisers, they have a cabin, and you can camp out. You're safe, but like you're in the middle of like the lion area, and it helps raise money to pay for the vets and stuff for these animals that were mistreated. So I, I mean, you have stuff like that. I've got a few ideas I don't want to give out for free. But yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff you can do, right? Where you can have like that in California where they have the dinners and the restaurants or you had um, in the CBD business, you have people that are just warehouses storing product for other people as they find buyers. I think the sky's the limit, really. It's it's That's what's kind of fun about this industry too is it's so new and you have so many bright people working in it and so many hungry people. Uh, I'm, I'm excited just to see what's going to happen. I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff we've never even thought of, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, look at all the stuff you have now. You have lotions, you have sub sublinguals, you've got um, vaporizers, you've got, you know, classic flour. It's it's fascinating. You got drinks, you got edibles. It's I can't I can't wait to see what people come up with next. Even on like the tourism side, like I think it could be similar, like you can visit like a hemp field similar to how you go to a vineyard. Yeah. So yeah, I think that, that, yeah, go ahead. No, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh yeah, I thought you were about to say something there. No, I was I was just agreeing with you, but I got excited. I should have waited. I yeah, know, yeah. Even on the gourmet side, like I think too, like there are gonna be some restaurants coming out. They're only gonna have the hemp ingredients on there, or like at least a dish with only all their dishes have hemp somewhere in the in yeah, hundred percent. So yeah, that there's some, another thing to look out for as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And actually, I don't know if you saw that in LA, I think, or California, they had a couple of restaurants like that right before the pandemic. And unfortunately, they had to close. So I'd love to see that come back. I've heard recently in Nevada, they just passed uh, legislation or an ordinance that lets them do the lounges like you'd see overseas. Mm -hmm. So I think that's going to be cool. Yeah, to your point where you can just have people come together and hang out, uh, you know, and try a product for maybe the farm that maybe it's on the farm. And they also have like a spot where you can hang out and listen to like a local music group or have a local chef make some infused food. Right. And then they're also like, here's their product on the farm. And have some cross development there. Yeah, it's going to be really cool. What about because you mentioned too that like you're fighting on the consumable side. What about on the fiber side as well too for industrial purposes? I I'm not as familiar with the industrial side to be honest. I don't deal in that arena as much. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean the plant's so amazing. It, it's so strong if you use it for synthetic stuff with ropes and and clothing and paper and I, it's, I'm, I'm very happy to see that we're starting to get those facilities back in the states and not importing at all and uh, it's really cool to see more and more mainstream clothing groups use the hemp fiber and clothes um, and you see that as you you know order stuff online seeing those options yeah because i'm interested to see what happens in construction with hemp creek and then even yeah. you can make hemp wood too mm -hmm. 
yeah, I'm really excited for that. I first saw that last year. I think it was the uh, Hemp in the Midwest was the event. And they had some people out there and I had never thought about that. And yeah, it's really cool with the insulation properties and the fire resistance. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you brought that up, man. I completely spaced it. I was thinking, like, go, you were about to say something? No, nah, I was done. Okay. I was like, too, like, because hemp fiber is so strong. Like, Henry, I think there was a story back then that Henry Ford built a car made from hemp. And then they tried swinging an axe and then the axe went completely backwards. That's so, awesome. I would say, say, like, that could give the military some ideas to make maybe armor from hemp. Let's see if it can, what the bullet happens. Yeah, that's a great point. Or to your point, too, like, maybe they use that for ammunition instead of metal for, like, maybe target practice. So then it's more recyclable and they don't have to worry about, like, lead in the ground. Oh, yeah. You know? that's, I never thought about that. You know, like, the, the that's what's so cool about the, yeah, the possibilities are endless. Uh, but, but, and that's what's so exciting. But to make a bullet from hemp, it could actually do damage to the target, though. Or is it just for practice? I'll leave that to them. I don't know. Or maybe yeah. we'll talk offline and that'll be our next business. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, there's a whole bunch of regulations, though, when it comes to ammunition. So I'm not going to talk to them. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's not worth it. Well, yeah. it could be, but it's not for me. No, yeah, me neither. But yeah, just like I feel like it's just amazing how one plant can do so much. Yeah, I think the possibilities are endless. There's, it's going to be really cool. Really even, neat. even the growth cycle is like three to four months. It's short. It's much shorter than wood. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it. You're 100 percent right. It's more bug resistant too than wood. Obviously, when wood it, it dies out, like you get termites and other bugs. Yeah, it's, it's a fantastic product. I'm, I'm excited for us to start yeah. using it. I mean, and I want to see. Do you think, I wonder too, if it's something they can start putting in the 3D printers and on some of those 3D uh, printed houses you're seeing out West. I'm not familiar with it, but that could be an interesting option. Oh, I've seen that too, like shipping container houses. There's a lot of out of the box ways you can build houses, but to have a house made entirely of hemp would be the dream. Yeah, that'd be neat. And we get away from fossil fuel use. So I, I think that's a win-win. Yeah, oh, insulation is like popular. Like that's, people are looking into that. Like, getting insulation i think you can actually make uh paint from hemp i believe that's pretty cool i didn't know that i think i'm pretty sure i have to look back at it i'm, I'm going to double check at some point i think i believe you could i think i know it's oh a stucco you could okay and i think too, awesome. i'm curious too if they can use hemp to make like uh perfumes like soaps and like shampoos too you can use some of the terpenes yeah i bet they could them. You know, I bet they could because you've already I've already seen it in like lotions for years as well. So like for the collagen stuff, I'd imagine. So, I, yeah, I bet that'd be a easy. I bet they do have some stuff for shampoos and conditioners and that kind of business. Absolutely. I bet yeah, they do. And chocolate, what other. Uh, so I guess right now, too, what would you say the biggest issue you have with with organization too? like which law was is you saying like, oh, damn, this is this is give, keeping us up at night um honestly the the craft hemp stuff just fighting that um so a couple of years ago they made it where craft hemp flower was illegal in the state and there was a court case where they were challenging it and it recently got dropped so uh, there's still no so no outcome on that so unfortunately there's still no craft hemp flower allowed to be sold legally in the state of indiana which some of our clients lost you know 30 40 percent of their their profits just oh, wow. And so that's been a big problem. And it's obnoxious because Indiana is a big agricultural state. We have Purdue University, one of the, probably the best ag schools in the world. And we can't. And they're, they're just holding us back. Um, and so I'd, I'd like to see that change. I'd say that's a big one. And then part two is the looming specter of overregulation. Some regulation is good for sure. Um, but then overregulation. So just always making sure that what they're doing is fair to everybody and making sure it's safe because you want to make sure it's a safe product too but but also making sure it allows the farmers to farm you know and it doesn't uh over regulate kind of what they do you've seen some movement on moving up the uh thc content to one percent just going to talk about that instead of the point three uh we'll see yeah what do you think that would do with to your organization if they, that smokable flower thing got passed the smokable flower law I think it helped because you'd, you'd have more people probably getting into the industry again. Um, Cause I think, and y'all probably know better than me, but a lot of people got in and like the, the, the green rush, so to speak a couple years ago. 
and then it seemed like there was an oversaturation of oh, yeah. that product, you know, and so uh, and I think some people got caught up in that and then new people have been apprehensive to get in the game. So I'd say if we had that, you'd, one, you'd allow the farmers to get back to doing what they do best, which is growing. And two, uh, you know, just let more people get in, it, get in the industry, which I would imagine would then lead to more memberships and, or, or at least more people having a conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the one thing too is like, like because there have been so many businesses opening up selling like hemp products, not all of them go through the whole process of getting the proper testing and COAs. I think that's a huge issue right now, in my opinion. Yeah, it's a huge problem. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't know if you saw up in Michigan, they had an issue with testing earlier in the year where there was some uh, some bogus testing going on and it was going, and there's a lot of product going out to dispensaries with uh, mold and bud rot. Yeah, because I know there's, I've heard some stories where somebody, where the company will take somebody else's COA and then change the name that it was there. So it should be like some QR code or some kind of tracking on the paper to trace it back. So then let's say if somebody did that, they changed the name and then they scan the code and it could come back saying like, oh, that wasn't theirs. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I think that's been a larger, I think that's a, there's a dark number to that where there's going on a lot more than people realize. Not a lot, lot more. I don't want people to freak out, but I think that's something that we're always concerned about is, is the, the illegitimate carts going out. Like sometimes you see at gas stations uh, and not at like, you know, legitimate dispensaries that have to be, go through the regulatory process in the same way. So I'd like to see some more regulation on that, maybe so that the legitimate stores can keep doing what they're doing, but we we don't have people selling hot carts and hurt people. Uh-huh. And and you're starting to see D8 flour, which is interesting to me because that's essentially got to be CBD flour, right? They spray with D8. Uh-huh. Uh, and you see in that in gas stations too. And then to your point, it's like, yeah, where's the COA? Where's the QR code? Like what's going on with this? Was this your buddy Mike making it in this basement? You know, like yeah. So, and those are real concerns, and and uh, so that's something that keeps us up at night too. Oh yeah, I would never buy CBD from a gas station. I hear you, brother, but like I can't tell you how many times, man, where I'll be at, uh, I'll be in my apartment walking well, when I had my dog walking him, and you'll hear like some of the people talking. Well, I got this at the um, some local gas station, right? And you're just like, oh my goodness. And then like, you're just in the back of your mind, you're waiting to hear the ambulance or something or waiting to hear some, some horrible story. Uh, Cause you never know. You never know what they're, what these folks are putting in and what corners they're cutting. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. It's, and then, you know, and as you know, then it adds illegitimacy to the rest of us that are doing it right. Oh they yeah. Just drop harder. I was like, I was, Cause you just mentioned gas station, like hemp could be used as fuel too. And it's a really good fuel. So like, can you yeah. add- I feel like I mean somebody's. I bet somebody's going to start a like a hemp derived gas station where it's all hemp fuel, and then you can go walk in the mini mart. It's going to be all hemp products and CBD oil with COAs. Like, yeah, it could be. I mean, it's 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 just such a wonderful plant. Now, it's not the cure for everything, right? But like, it's yeah, it's yeah. useful for so many things, and it's it's well beyond time that we um, have finally started to be able to look into its uses. It's very it's myriad uses. I think it's well. For a long time, too, like a lot of like farm animals were fed hemp, so they had the cannabinoids, too. Yeah. You have your steak yeah. and chicken. So that's like, that's another good use for it. It can be used in the animal feeds, too. Absolutely. Yeah. And I know that's a big fight that's been going on for the last year or two was uh, getting that being able to be regulated for animal food again, CBD products and hemp products. Yeah, because not all, because sometimes not all the animals are fed their proper diets, too. So, yeah, I heard a story, maybe it was Texas, where they were feeding cattle uh, candy, like hard candy from a hard candy factory, like it's rejects, yeah. and they were just giving it to the cattle, and that, I, I should have done more research into, now I just put it out on the internet, uh, but that just sounded so wild, but it's just the calories, and then it's like you're eating food off a, you know, animal that just ate hard candy forever, I don't know, oh, or maybe it was a supplement. Oh, wow. Oh, I didn't hear about that. Good. Yeah, this was a couple of years ago when uh, when there was a drought going on. So maybe, I don't know. That maybe, oh, maybe, it's, maybe, maybe because the grass was dried, so they had to find a way to get around that for a bit. Yeah, I, I should have, you know, I should have, I shouldn't have told that story without knowing for a fact it was true. But I remember that was going around when the drought was going. I remember hearing that, and I just thought that was like the wildest thing I'd heard in a long time. I mean, yeah, it's not, well, just a rumor. Let's keep it at that. Yeah, grain of salt. Yeah. 
And what advice would you have to somebody think about entering the cannabis space? Do it. <laughs> Do it. And don't and don't wait for like that magic window. Because the magic window is not always super prep, like yeah. obvious. Um, and you'll see it looking back. But I would say just get into it. Don't you don't want to be the person in 10 years looking at everybody else that's been successful or that's been um, groundbreaking in the industry. Like, just get in, get involved, uh, volunteer if not if you have the time and you're able, you know, if nothing else. Or, you know, if you can just apply, apply for the places, talk to owners. Um, if there's a brand you really like, contact them and just say, hey, I appreciate what you guys are doing. Uh, you know, here's my info. I'd love to have opportunity to work with you. I particularly like such and such, you know, be precise um, with whatever it is and, 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 and get after it. But now's the time because I would say we're still pre-peak obviously you know and, and there's not a better time to get involved and not hate for people to have regrets that they didn't get in when it was still early i think right now is a great time to get in yeah it's the best yeah absolutely it's definitely the best time yeah yeah and, and don't and don't hesitate to reach out to folks too like i'm guilty of this uh, is is don't if there's someone you follow on like linkedin or social media that's in the industry and you admire what they do don't the vast majority of them that i've chatted with have have always been super cool about just shoot them a message like don't don't be a weirdo and shoot them like 50 messages right but like just shoot them a message hey appreciate what you do I'd, I'd love to pick your brain sometime here's what i'm about and and i think you'd be surprised how many times you'll get a positive uh conversation out of that oh definitely so yeah it was great having you on you're more than welcome to be back Thank on you. one about the legis if somebody if people have questions about the legislation side or the yeah. educational side and thank you again Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to come on whenever uh, our our legislative cycle starts up. Probably it'll be like end of November, December time, and then it's January till till uh, mid spring. Yeah, happy happy to come and chat. And thank you so much for having me on. Glad we could get together. Yeah, no problem. If anybody's still watching, like, comment, subscribe. Yep. See. You. See ya. Thank you again.